Relative Dimension presents The Apartment, an adventure from the Cyberpunk Red Jumpstart Kit. Let's see, what happened to Racer's family again? Oh, you were exiled. What about Red Eye's family? Uh, they lost everything through bad management. Okay. And I'm assuming I'm assuming stuff like, you know, our characters' appearances up to us. Yeah. Okay. Um, unless you if you want to go default here, I'll show you the Oh, the bios show images if you want to use them, but you don't have to. Okay. Yeah, those are fine. Let me archive the ones I don't need here. I think I know roughly what this character would look like, at least in my head, just based off of the stats. Okay. So, three years ago, Racer, you inherited an apartment building. You happen to be living on the third floor of it. Uh, Red Eye is also living on the third floor of this apartment building. You have other people that live here, too. You are uh, kind of central night city towards the south end. You are roughly four blocks north of the combat zone. The combat zone being where services don't go into. There are still houses and shops and, and stores and things like that, but it's the rougher end of town. Police will go there if it's really bad, but for the most part, even they don't go down there. This is one of the few non-corporate owned apartments in Night City. The uh, ex-lover enemy lives in this apartment as well. Oh, great. Okay. Wonderful. <laughs> so you guys tend to try to avoid each other when you can, you know. If one of you sees uh, somebody walking down the hall, the other one kind of steps back into the, their apartment or turns the other way. As far I may as... sometimes play practical jokes on them because screw them. Yeah. The rent of the other tenants helps keep... Uh, it helps cover needed repairs and bribes needed to keep the building safe and protection money paid, but for the most part, it barely breaks even. So it's not like a cash flow or anything like that. It's a place to live and it roughly pays for itself. The downside being that there's no government services available in the area. There is a fixer, Rex, that as long as he is paid a monthly fee, most of the booster gangs in the area don't bother the building's inhabitants. It's a good situation in paradise when compared to the rest of Night City. The roof has a view of the city that could be a postcard. So sometimes you happen to have like a rooftop barbecues up there, which is where you currently are. Find yourself on this particular evening. Up on top is Rico Robinson as well. He is a musician. Every morning he lives on the fourth floor and every morning Everybody gets to hear his music, which begins with several scales and evolves seamlessly into experimental melodies. He typically begins the mornings with the trumpet, but he switches between several instruments before the afternoon, recording as he goes. During lunch, he then mixes his recordings together, adding some guitar and drums. Uh, people often ask him to stop playing, but he usually doesn't. And because of that, Nobody's really asked him in a long time to stop playing anymore. Is his, is his nickname Rooster? It can be if you want for to call him Rooster. Waking, for waking us up in the morning. You do know that uh, when he was younger, he was part of a band called the Night Children, and it broke up almost as fast as they got famous, and now he's semi-retired. <laughs> He will occasionally play clubs around the combat zone or as a solo act, accompanying himself with his own recordings. He is good friends with Gina. Gina lives alone in her apartment since before you moved in, and she is an animal lover. Her apartment is often filled with the sounds of squawking and mimicked human speech. 
She has, that you know of, three pets. Rico, her salmon-crested cockatoo. Puddles, her aldabra tortoise. And Spooky, her veiled chameleon. And no people have asked, but Rico is not named after the musician Rico. It's just coincidental. And the third person you know is Grant Jung. He works for Rex professionally, and he goes by the handle of Royal. His room is paid for as part of the building's yearly payment to Rex that keeps the building safe from the area's many booster gangs that would terrorize it if they could. So he is your apartment security for the most part. Great. So you guys are on the roof. It is late afternoon. The sun is going down. And Rico is up there with his guitar and several recordings backing him up as he's playing. A nice, you know, accompaniment for this evening barbecue. And Gina is up there with a bird on one shoulder that is squawking along with the music, but not in time. Yeah, birds and rhythm. Oh, there is one, uh, there is another family. The Andersons. They are a quote-unquote family. Most people are aware that they are a small-time booster gang. There are five of them that are squeezed into their single apartment. You guys know Judy Anderson, the tall one, Maurice Anderson, the short one, Marco and Andy Anderson, the twins. What was that again? Four. Where'd the fifth one go? Oh, Molly. Molly is the head of the family. She's the 25-year-old matriarch, Molly Anderson. And the other four are Judy Anderson, the tall one, Maurice Anderson, the short one, and Marco and Andy Anderson, the twins. And one thing that gives away that they are a gang is the fact that each of them have Anderson spelled out in knuckle tattoos. Oh my, how attractive. Yes, indeed. And they actually have brought some meat for the barbecue. And nobody is asking where the meat came from, or in fact, what the meat is. I don't think we're in a financial situation to question about the meat, I'm going to be honest. Not really. Most food is either kibble, a dried protein supplement, or synthetic food. Only the rich and elite usually have real food and or meat. Are we still living off the face of, like, all hail the mighty soybean? Um, more like plankton and krill, generally. Okay. Well, do the worse. Andersons live in the building? Or yes, they do. Are they just, do they, or did they invite them? Okay, so they, they, they live in the building and they invited themselves to the barbecue. Yes. Hey, if they're bringing the meat, then I'm not complaining. And Rico is over there telling a story. And I was playing in the club last night. It was packed. You normally don't see that many people out here in the zone. Oh, you think it was some kind of special occasion? I don't know. There were no suits that I saw, but... Maybe there's just a new crowd moving in. I don't know. Anybody else be seeing any new people in town? Ah, not really anyone that sticks out like a sore thumb. Were Were you playing at a new place? Nah, it was the old joint the whiskey barrel Grant or sorry Royal is kind of sitting off to himself he has his uh, he is stereotypically cleaning his handgun as long as the new people don't bother us over here we should be fine Uh, yeah but you know if I want to move in and start paying rent then maybe maybe that'll help us all out a little bit he kind of uh, glares but shrugs Listen, all I'm saying is more people means more money, which means that maybe the area will improve slightly. I mean, yeah, this is better than most places here in Shit City, but come on. Eh, The area could be doing better. Yeah, they could all be doing better. Could be another family. Could be. Well, keep your eye out. If you see them again, or if you see them acting suspicious, let me know. Maybe I can discourage any wrongdoing before it happens. I'll keep an eye out. Uh, At that point, one of the twins, Andy, who is kind of standing over by the edge of the roof, looking around, 
noticeably kind of uh, changes his stance and begins looking down over the side of the building. Not directly down, but almost as if he's looking at something on the ground across the street, maybe. Uh, something up, Andy? Uh, yeah. It's kind of strange looking. Speak, pe- speaking of people looking strange here, why don't you get a load of them? And we all move over, move over to the edge of the building and look down. Yep. Oh, across the street is a black car that, now that you think about it, you saw it there earlier today. Nobody thought anything of it because, you know, wasn't doing anything. However, near the vehicle now are two people in uh, corp uniforms that look like they are guarding a man that is standing in front of an easel, kind of uh, making measurements, uh, looks like, and he has a set of cameras mounted on each of his shoulders. And the cameras and the, the easel is facing him, but he is occasionally glancing up at your apartment building. And is he looking like he's painting or something? Uh, sketching, maybe? Taking notes? Every once in a while, he kind of glances away from the easel at the building and holds his hands up, and, and you know, as though he's trying to estimate distances or something. What do you, uh, what do you reckon that guy's up to? I mean, I know it's a free country or whatever, but who... who like, if he's some kind of wandering painter, why is he with a bunch of corpse? And if he's also some kind of wa- wandering painter, why paint a shithole like that? Uh, could be a, an executive or something that is worth protecting. And, you know, out painting city life or something. I don't know. You may both give me a perception roll. I got my beeps turned down. Are those 18 and 23 the two new rolls? Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, you can both make out the uniforms are Militech uniforms. Militech, uh, for those that don't know, was recently engaged in... Oh, recently, I want to say it was like 20 years ago. They were, at one point, the top weapons manufacturing corporation, supplying much of the U.S. military as well as private security firms. They were hired to back a small corporate because they provided private um, mercenaries and guards and there was a small corporate conflict and Militech provided assets to this small corporation well this small corporation they were at odds with a corporation that was backed by Arasaka which is one of the leading or was at the time one of the leading private security corporations and they have come to conflict a lot throughout the years and it started as supplying some extra troops here and some weapons there and as this small corporate conflict went on Arasaka and Militech started ignoring their small corp that they were each backing and started open conflict among each other which started the fourth corporate war which spread globally So just about anywhere, anywhere Militech forces saw Arasaka forces, combat would often open up. And then about 20 years ago, a tactical nuke was detonated at the top of Arasaka Tower. And most people blame Militech as the people that set off that nuke, but nobody knows for sure. So they are still rebuilding their corporate presence. You know, most corps are still bad news. They're not as big as they once were, but they're still significant. And it may or may not be odd that they are the ones guarding this guy, doing what he's doing. Should uh, one of us go down and talk to him? Because I know I'm not in the mood for people right now. Racer braces her foot against the edge of the, uh, the roof and, like, hollers down at the, the figures. Yo, what you doing to our building? Uh, One of the guards glances up. He's wearing sunglasses, so you can't see his eyes, but he glances up at you and then ignores you and once again begins scanning the area around. No reaction from the guy at the weasel? weasel? Um, No, he seems very focused on what he is doing. Now, Now, that's just rude. That is... Grant, should you go talk to him? 
Yeah, I'll go talk to him. Uh, out of character, is there such a thing as like a garden hose? Yes. Like, I don't know if there's like a water service supplied to the building or anything. I'm just, yeah, I'm you're not quite kind of... in the combat zone, so you do have some basic. I mean, here where you are, the water may lose pressure from time to time or go out for an hour or two, you know. But you do generally have water service. Okay, so occasionally, like, the, the, the sidewalk in front of the building would have to be hosed off or something. I'm kind of... Okay. Um, uh, shall we try to, like, you know, wash the our new friends? Uh, may, may, maybe, maybe not. Their corpse, after all, they might get a little bit pissy. Uh, Grant goes Research over... Research looks a little taken aback. Grant goes over there okay. and reassembles the rest of his handgun and holsters it, and then he goes into the stairwell and starts heading down. Yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna watch I'm just gonna watch the fireworks. Uh, it takes him a maybe a minute or two before he's down at the bottom, and he starts. Hey, Rika. To... Go ahead. That guy that guy down there doesn't look familiar to you, does he? He doesn't look like one of those people. At the at the. Rico walks over. No, no, I don't think he was one of the ones at the club. I think I'd remember him. And then Grant, you see him exit the apartment building, and he starts to walk over, at which point uh, one of the guards holds his hand up, and you can... Yeah, you, one of you has cyber audio? I do, have I don't have anything. Yeah. It I don't think be in I gear. have cyber audio. I don't I got, have anything for that. I got cyber optics and uh, rippers, agent, and ground. Okay. Let's say somebody has cyber audio. I just forget who. I don't see anything listed on my sheet for it. Okay. Well, he he. Uh, one of the guards that happens to be the one closer to where Grant is walking across holds his hand up. Move along, or you'll be shot. And Grant stops. Um, his stance is one of wary caution, but also, I don't know, kind of that, that bracing, uh, kind of stealing himself. And then he turns and glances up at the, where you guys are standing. Hmm. I'm not honestly sure what to do. Uh, if, if the conversation is continuing, the, the guy with the easel isn't responding, gesture back toward the building uh, at Grant. Yeah, the guy with the easel is not responding. He seems really focused on what he's doing, and perhaps his glasses are displaying something in front of his eyes that are making him a bit oblivious to what's going on. But Grant slowly, you know, takes a step back, watching them the whole time. And then he enters the, the apartment, and a few minutes later, he's back up top. Is there any way to like identify the car like i mean is there like uh i don't know if they have license plates or anything actually a uh, question i know that the crash wave virus is a thing that happened um and i'm also not the best at, i don't know a ton about it net running specifically but could i from here plug into like the net in some way uh let's see because i want to like try and like if there's any security cameras nearby like street cameras possibly try and hack into one of those so there are some remote and you can access those to get hard data you generally have to jack into or out of a system though with data crash a lot of information is stored locally now it's not broadcast to the entire net which requires the net runner like if you're hacking into an office building you kind of have to be at the office building as you go but for things like garbage trucks uh, let's see here there are nine abilities you can perform as actions that are automatically programmed into your deck these are scanner you can find the meat space location of a si any systems in the area Back door, attempt to break through the password in a net architecture. Pathfinder, to partially reveal the map of a net architecture. Slide, attempt to flee combat with black ice. Does he need to plug in to do these things? 
Um, it depends. If it's something that is like a remote uh, drone or something, then no. But I'm looking to see what else here. Zap makes you let you make an attack against a program or enemy network. So the impression I'm getting is there's not a lot of wireless. It's a lot of hard wire. So yeah, there's a lot have of hard to, wire. Like, to, Okay, so you'd have to find a like a terminal or something to plug into to hack the system that it was a part. Of. Yeah, so if this car was a remote to something, you would have to hack into whatever was controlling the car. So that being said, what were you trying to go for again? Um, like street cameras, uh, just any kind of camera that could let me get like a better view of the car, maybe a better view of what they're doing, maybe a view of some license plates. Okay, so if you got to the node of the apartment, you can hack into it and look through any cameras in the apartment. Okay. I could kind of assume he would have already hacked our, our apartment, the whole building. Yeah, well, he still have to plug into it, though. Yeah, and, 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 and I'm going to you know, look at everyone here and be like, I'll be right back. I'm going to do some digging, and I'm going to leave to plug into the node. Okay. Does my agent have a phone? Yeah. Uh, sorry, a camera. I mean, yeah, your agent. I don't know is if it's like smartphone, smartphone model or anything. Okay, uh, I'm gonna start recording, taking pictures, and then uh, from the roof, and then I'm gonna go downstairs and try to do the same thing from the front of the door. Uh, should I roll anything to plug into the node and do my searchy searchy? Yes, roll me interface plus one d ten. Okay. A uh, total of 15. You find the difficulty number here. All right, typical DVs. Why is it not showing? Oh, wait. Um, hang on, I'm looking at the like net running thing, and the example of local net stuff is like uh, control nodes or surveillance cameras. The DV is. Um, a control role versus DV11, I think. If I'm reading this right. At least I think I could okay, be wrong. Okay, I see this here. In a network, DV12 control node that manages cameras on his floor. Okay. So you beat the control node. You can easily take control of the cameras. There happens to Sweet. be two cameras. One that kind of looks f towards uh, from the front side of the car so it's still across the street so you have uh, if the car was say facing to the left when you guys were looking out on the roof you have a camera angle looking from the front left and one from the rear left with that roll me a perception check alrighty let's see perception 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 23 okay you can make out on the car some markings that say world set okay what else could i try and um all right racer mm -hmm. what were you doing you're heading downstairs uh, right it, well first i'll you know take pictures or video from above and then i'll go downstairs how long do you want to take video from above uh, just like a minute or so okay so you would have time to do that by the time uh red eye got into the system so where do you wish to go from there what when i'm downstairs you mean yes uh from the sidewalk in front of my building you know start using my agent to start recording the car and the people doing it right zoom into them take pictures you know take take a zoom in of any markings or registrations on the car that sort of okay are you trying to be stealthy about this no in fact i'm trying to be a little obvious about it Okay. In that case, um, Red Eye, you see from one of the camera angles, Racer walk out with their agent and kind of hold it up and start to take video. And it looks like the two guards are bringing their weapons up to bear then. Well, shit. So both of you make me initiative checks. Well, shit. <laughs> I'm going to use this. Yeah, I hope you're recording it from that camera. <laughs> y y yeah, is it, is it, is it hmm. yeah, I, I, I hope. I, I want to say I've been recording, but I'll probably start recording on my turn if I haven't been on. Uh, yeah, I don't have a token, but I got a 19. 
I got a 14. Grease is the fixer. Who's the solo? All right. Uh, let's see, tokens. Let me bring something out here. Damn it, I need a new mouse. Click of death? No, it, it loses um, response. I'll be like sliding across the screen or whatever, and it'll just freeze. Oh, that sounds a bit weird. All right. Red eye. Let me get you on. All right. Red eye is the red dot. Racer is the blue dot. Okay. All right. What were your totals? Red eye had a 15. No. 14. I had a 19. I uh, marked it down myself. Okay. You can do that? Yeah, you can yeah, edit okay. the turn order. Yeah. Since when? Uh, I have no clue. It's been like that for a while. Somebody should tell me these things. I've been playing on Roll20 for a long time now, and this would have been really handy a couple I don't think you can add yourself to the turn order unless you have your token selected when you roll, but once you're added, you can modify it. All right. Um, let's go with Grant. Oh, I see you're using the tokens I made a while back. Yep, they're buried on my table somewhere security. Alright, so Racer, you go first. It looks like they are uh, bringing up... What are they bringing? Uh, one of them is... The one that closest to you is bringing a very heavy pistol to bear. The other one looks as though he is retrieving from a sling that's hanging behind him an assault rifle. Uh, where are they on the map? Oh boy. Uh, they would be... Actually, let me try this. We'll say they're down there, and then uh, P will be the guy with the easel. You know, this is definitely this is definitely one of those days that's gone from ah, pretty all right to oh crap, people have drawn weapons. Okay, what about S and G? Are they like in the middle of the road or something? Or I mean, no, they were just okay. So Racer is gonna like lift up the agent and her other hand in the air, like you know, she's like holding her hands up going, what the hell wait what what are you guys doing what the and i guess she's gonna try to back around the corner a little okay uh the sheet with the actions didn't make it here so on your turn you can do a move action and a basic action basic actions are things like attack uh grab something choke something throw get up run use an object, etc. For moving, you can move your move stat times two, a number of that many squares. Oh, let's do the derive. Did you guys both fill out your hit points? Uh, the hit points already filled out. 35 yeah, for me. 25 for me. Oh, okay, so already did it then. It's derivative of your body stat. All right, so you take up and move around the corner. Uh, Grant then goes next. So 14. I could theoretically have sprinted across and, like, done something to one of them. You can, yeah, because they don't go until 14. No. I, Racer's not looking for, like, a, a fight yet. She's just trying to find out why somebody's trying to scope out her building. Grant, however, is. So they are... I guess I should change this to yards, but... Uh, so each square is 2 meters, so they are 14, they are 28 meters away. He has a very heavy pistol, so he's got a difficulty of 25 to hit, and he misses with that shot. So he is uh, not going to be using his pistol. Red Eye, you are in the system. What would you like to do? Oh, sweet. I'm not sure what all I can do from within the system. Um, hmm. What are my fancy Netrunner abilities? Royal fired a warning shot. <laughs> yeah, Let's Royal find a, fired a warning shot. Across their bow. Um, I don't suppose there's some way that I could scan to see if they have anything that I could remotely access. I suppose that's not really within the jurisdiction of, like, this node or really with how the net currently works. Correct. Hmm. Now, if you could sneak over into their car, you could probably plug into that and drive off with it or something. 
This is a tempting proposition, but hmm, what a good way to get there. And do I have control of anything else while I'm in the apartment's note? Uh, yeah, you'd have control of the elevators, the cameras, um, various AC units, um, heating, cooling stuff in the different apartments. Let me know okay. if there's anything else you would be interested in. I think mainly I'm just going to unplug and... What floor would I be on? Uh, the fourth floor is the top, so you could be at the fourth floor. But you had a minute or so, so you could be down on the ground floor if you wanted to. Yeah, I'd like to say I'm on the ground floor, and I'm going to unplug and move closer to the, like as close to the front door as I can get. You can do so. Okay. All right. All right, them. They are... I did it not... Hold on, let me reload my table. All right, now it's better. Uh, the one with the pistol is going to take a shot at Racer over there, ducking behind the corner. Do you happen to have a reflex of 10? Uh, I don't think I have a reflex of 10. Let me hold on. Do either of you have a reflex of 10? Uh, it's 9. Close, but not. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Yeah, my reflex is only 7. Okay, so firearms are against a static difficulty number unless you have a reflex of 10, at which point you can try to dodge with an evasion roll. But since neither of you do... Let's see, this guy has a pistol. He needs to beat a 25, which is not likely. And then the other guy has an assault rifle, and he is going to fire up at Grant. And Grant has a little bit of cover, so... I'm going to give him a plus two, or rather a minus two, but he only needs a 12. All right, so he is going to hit Grant for eight damage. Where did the sheet go? All right, so Grant has heavier armor than that, so Grant is fine. Uh, Racer, you are up. Okay, um, I guess uh, she'll go... Shit! And, and take out her pistol and take a shot at the guy with the SMG. The assault rifle, you mean? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Oh no, yeah, she, yeah, she has a very heavy pistol. So, to to how do I attack with it? I use marksmanship. Marksmanship, and you need with a very heavy pistol, you need a twenty-five. Now, what you can do is take a turn to aim, which will add plus one to your attack. If it's close, anyway. No, I don't think she would have taken the time to aim right away. Okay. She would have just taken a shot off, hoping they'll, like, like get the news and just decide to get out of it. 23, close. Uh, Grant, when he came back up to the roof, he had stopped and grabbed his own rifle. So his pistol's not doing any good. He is going to holster the pistol and ready the rifle for next turn. Red Eye, you are near the front door, which is there with a little bit of light peeking out of it onto the sidewalk. So about there-ish? Yeah, you could be there. Okay, and what was my move and distance again? Let me re-fix this real quick. Hold on. This street is too wide. So. Uh, I think you said twice your move number, so for me that would be uh, 7 times 2, but then each square is 2, so basically your move. I'm going to fix this a little bit. So you actually hit, because they shouldn't be that far away. Oh, okay. I'll roll the damage. 17 damage. Uh, let's see. His armor stops 7 of that. 10 goes through. So yeah, he kind of lets out a yelp of pain. Um, because your damage penetrated his armor, his body armor is now down to 6. All right, so now, Red Eye, you may go. Okay, well, I think what I'd like to do is, um... Honestly, I, tr I want to try and get closer to the car, but I don't want to be seen. Now, I don't know how possible it is to stealth across an open road, so I might just gun it for the car. Uh, you could hmm. go out to the side if you want. Oh. Yeah. Stealth around the back that way. Um... So, uh, I'm not sure how far I could get. 
because like my movement's only ten. Well, my my move score is five, which means my move distance is ten. If I have my math right. Yeah, so you could move. Um, we can start you at that edge of the building, so you can go ten squares from there. So you could attempt to get across and behind the car. Uh, you will need a stealth roll, though. Eighteen. Okay. Uh, how do luck? How how does luck work again? Uh, luck, you can choose to spend it before you make a roll on a one for one basis. Okay. Okay. I'll keep that in mind for now. How does it get refreshed? Uh, at the start of every game. That's raw. I'm thinking if I you know do this long term, I'm going to fix it and let you spend. Uh, one point before you roll to add two to your roll or after the fact you can spend two points to add one to your roll. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, 18 on my stealth to try and get to the car. I will remember that number, but go ahead and move yourself. Uh, All the way to the car or just about halfway? Um, All the way. Okay. Okay. Uh, The guy with the handgun is still shooting at Racer, who's now 19 meters away. So with a handgun, 19, difficulty is 20. Uh, He needs like a 10 and then some to succeed here. However, you did shoot the other guy with the assault rifle, so he is going to turn uh, his weapon to bear on you, and he is going to fire a shot. And with the assault rifle, he only needs a 10. All right, so this is going to hit Racer again. This is a body so shot. Choose, so it chews through the corner of the building and, and hits. Yeah. Well, you were shooting at the same guy that's shooting at you. Okay. So I got a, uh, yeah, but I mean, I, like, I'm at the corner, right? So I lean around to shoot him, right? Yeah. So in order for him to shoot me, like, sort of chew through the corner of the building. So my body armor is 15, so that means I take two and reduce it down to 14. Yes. She says shit again. And then uh, the guy that was behind the easel, he runs and uh, dives into the car, leaving his easel there. All right, Racer, you're up. Um, Both of these guys, I'm going to say the guy with the assault rifle took a knee. It doesn't really change anything, but and the other guy is hoping to rely on the distances to reduce his chance of being shot yet. Okay. Swing around the corner and, and take another shot at, at the guy with the assault rifle again. Okay. Yeah, only a 16 this time. Uh, 16 is not going to hit. Uh, for the guy with the rifle, I'm going to give him the green dot. All right. Grant now has his rifle up to bear. He is going to fire a covering shot at the guy with the rifle as well, since he is the bigger threat. Grant is going to fire a three-round burst. At this range for a three-round burst, he still needs a ten. Sort of getting the impression that inside the car, that guy is, like, scrabbling to get into the driving position. Yes. Alright, three-round burst. He needed a ten. He beat it. For every point he beats it, he gets one extra... Uh, damage roll up to a maximum of three. So he hits three separate times. Uh, First shot reduced by six. That leaves 12 going through. Second shot also reduced by six. Leaves 11 going through. Ouch. He's got... Ow. And third shot reduced by six. Leaves six going through. At which point now his armor drops by one down to five. However, that dude is 14 under, so he is now dying. Yay! So let's see. Mortally wounded. At zero hit points, you enter a death state and are mortally wounded. You take a minus five to all actions, but not to your death save, which you make at the start of your turn. Okay. That was Grant. From up on the roof. Three rounds. Red Eye, you are up. Is the car unlocked? You, uh, yeah. As you got to the the back there, the other dude didn't even see you as he went to the passenger side door, opened it up, and dove in. (laughs) Okay, um, 
Oh boy. I would like to get in into the back on this side of the car. So like kind of just slip around um, on like the driver's side and get into the back seat. And like as soon as I am, I, I just want to have my pistol pointed at the painter dude and just be, don't try anything. Is that doable? That is doable. Is there anything I should roll? Just be like, yeah, don't try anything. Um, give me a... Let's see here. I had this idea, like, you would get in the car next to him with your gun out and go, like, where we're going. So, conversation is getting information. Interrogation is its own skill. Roll me a persuasion roll if you have it. Okay, yeah, I, I, I have a little... I have a, I have a small quantity of persuasion. I'm going to spend... Like, I can spend multiple points of luck, correct? Yes, you can. Yeah, I'm going to spend four points. What extra modifier does that give? Uh, I'm going to use my house rule, so that gives you plus eight. Sweet. Plus eight would bring that up to a 25. Okay. I'm going to give him a will save. So his will stat is a four. He has to equal or roll under. Okay. So he saves. He doesn't panic and immediately, um, like, jump out or anything. He, he has enough of his faculties to sit still, and his, his arms start to go up. Great. Now stay quiet. You, you won't get away with this. Mm, keep talking, buddy. Or don't. Nah, yeah, don't. All right. Uh, one guy is still up, seeing his friend go down. He is going to get behind the hood of the behind the front fender of the car and take a knee. So he pretty much ducks mostly out of sight. Uh, I'm gonna give him a chance to see what's going on inside, though. No, not yet. He does. He doesn't glance into the window. He is more more concerned with staying out of sight at the moment. Sweet. And then uh, your your hostage there at the moment. Oh, what do you want? Just mm. let me go. There will be no trouble. I'm just here for a friendly chat. Like as I keep the gun pointed directly at him. <laughs> he is visibly nervous and tense but he doesn't say anything else at the moment. Uh, so, Racer, you are up. You lost sight of the guy. You know where he is. You can attempt to shoot through the car, but a very heavy pistol may or may not punch through it to do damage on the other side. Uh, is moving diagonals a one-for-one? One? Yeah. Why not? So, theoretically, I could sprint to the other side of the car from him. Oh, we're going to do that measure. Okay, so... Uh, that's probably not is something I can do. I've only got a seven move, so fourteen. So seven squares. Yeah, we're just going to use the line measurements. That's too far. So, is there any kind of maneuver? Is there any kind of maneuver you can move to to like you know like if you're going to be fired at like to dodge while you're running or to make it harder for it to be hit or something? Like like, Racer would have two targets, to move to the other side of the car from that guy, or to move to the ESL rifle. Yes. Um, let's see, it's not listed here, but what is your reflex? Nine. Okay. And what is your move? Seven, you said? Yep. So you can move 14 meters, uh, running faster than 10 meters with a reflex of 9, I'd give a minus 2 to hit you. Oh, okay. Uh, not a whole lot, but not terrible. Uh, but I'd be closing the range, so it'd be easier to hit me, right? It would shorter... be, yes. <laughs> now, what you can also do is, if you wanted to, uh, to start, like, run caddy corner to use the car as cover before you can then... Uh, finish next time and get closer to because then in order for him to see you you'd have to be able to see him so you'd get a shot off that way too okay and you can't like hold a shot like move a little bit and and shoot him if he pops up 
No, you can delay and wait until after he goes into it. Okay. Uh, so there's no holding an action or anything. Okay. Um, eh, what the hell? Uh, I'm going to run Caddy Corner uh, to try to put the car between me and him. And because I'm moving quickly, I'll get that extra plus two, just in yep. case. Okay. Uh, Grant is going to... Um, he's just going to take up position and wait as well. So he's going to delay. Uh, Red Eye, you are in the car with the dude. Are you saying anything else or gesturing for anything else? I'm, I'm going to keep the gun on him. I'm just going to like, you know, kind of quietly say, well, quietly ask, this thing got keys? Uh, yeah, yes. Hand him over. He does so. He takes them out of the ignition and you know with one hand raised up holding the keys he kind of tries to reach behind him which is kind of awkward to do but he kind of holds them up roughly level um equidist where his head is so that you could then reach yeah i can't easily get his hand up there further i'll 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 grab the keys while still keeping the gun at him and just be like good now we get to wait and yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that my 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 turn. Okay. Uh, S. The other security agent, from where he is, ducked down. Um, both of you may roll perception. This is hearing. Red eye in the car. Your difficulty will be higher because the car is a bit noise resistant. It is a good car. And this is audio. So if you have cyber audio, you can add that plus one. I rolled an 18. Yeah, 15. Uh, okay, even from inside, um, we'll say it's because uh, this guy has a radio too that squawks in. You hear, um, what would his name be? Uh, over over the the agent on the guy inside, and Racer, you just hear him speaking. Uh, this is Johnson. You need an extraction. We're pinned down. Well, shit. <laughs> He's like, you know, man down as well. We lost Roberts. Maybe dead. Maybe alive. But he's in a compromised position. And as soon as he hears that, uh, the guy in the seat, car seat is like, I'm fine with waiting. I'm sure you are. Look, look just, just let me go. I, I, I can... Make it worth your while. I'll consider it, but, uh, what were you even doing here? Surveying. Red, red Eye just, like, slowly blinks. <laughs> like, just, uh, yeah, right. Surveying for... A new communications tower? <sighs> hmm. All right, so Racer, what are you doing? Nothing happened? He didn't pop up. You heard him speak what he was speaking, but he hasn't popped out of cover. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to go around uh, the back of the, the car, and then I want to make a feint. I want to make it seem like I'm going to pop around and shoot him. Like, like, like if he's expecting me to pop out, I'm just, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to make a feint. Okay. Nah, I don't know if that's possible or not. Um, so you're trying to lunge as though you're going to pop out and shoot him, but not? Yeah. Yeah, but then jerk back before he can hit me. Okay. Let me see if he even notices you. I wasn't running quietly. I didn't use stealth or anything. I know. Let's see. Perception. Do you roll athletics for stealth? Stealth is its own skill, and it's based off of Dex, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't have it. Um, yeah, he does hear you. And he spins and points his gun in that direction. Uh, he doesn't shoot, though, since you don't actually pop out. Let us go. Uh, 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 I'll pay you. I've even got... Um, 200 euro on me. Let us go. This will end badly for you if you don't. 
says the guy in the car. You know, that's not the first time I've heard uh, I, I've heard that. I'm gonna be honest. So, Militech Communications Tower? Mil- no, they're just security. Okay, then who's the tower for? World Sat Communications. Okay, I'm just gonna. We're, we're, we're still gonna wait here until my friend outside uh, deals with your friend. He takes a slow, deep breath. All right, racer, you're behind the vehicle. He spun to face the back, but okay. And now that I've got his attention, I take my heavy pistol and I slide it along the ground on the other side of the car. So in other words, from left side to the right side toward the intersection. So I just want to like scoot it loudly, clatteringly along the ground. And then I'm going to jump out and using my claws, engage him. Uh, okay. if, 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 he, if he's facing the other way, I put my, uh, my reapers against his throat. Uh, if he's facing me, then I attack with him, or, you know, I, I attack with them. Okay. Rippers, rippers, that's it. Yeah. Um, let's see, he's got the best perception. Uh, do you have persuasion, since it seems like you're trying to persuade him into... Yeah, and I'll spend luck on this. ...giving you a vulnerable side. So I will spend four points of luck. Okay. So you may add eight. Twenty-seven. Unfortunately, this guy has no luck to add. He's got a slight chance. No, okay. So he uh, does kind of spin to follow the sound, and he realizes too late that it's not boot prints or footsteps that he's following, but the sound of metal and composites going that way, and he goes to turn back around to you, but you're already there. So with my rippers at his throat. Yeah, he... Hello, little... (laughs) Hello, big guy with a gun. You want to try putting it down? Uh, He lets go, but it's on a sling, so it kind of hangs at his side. Uh, This was the pistol guy. It's on a sling? This Oh, pistol. Never mind. Yeah, he he kind of gently tries to toss it aside. Okay, it was too close. I kick it away. And then I gesture toward the car. Get in. He does so? So Gesturing towards the passenger door or the back door? The the passenger door. Okay. He carefully opens the door and gets in. Okay. And then I'm going to retrieve my gun and look at the easel. All right. Uh, When you opened the door and he was getting in, you saw Red Eye in the back seat. Evening. All right. I saw him run across the the road and get in the car, so I know he's yeah. there. All right, so you know he's there. Uh, you see on the easel, it looks like there is um, some hard-to-make-out sketches. Uh, it does indeed look like the street view of... Um, with measurements from one street corner to the other street corner on a line, how many meters that happens to be. There's a a top-to-bottom measurement of the building itself. Um, So there's a rough sketch of the building, and in darker pencil overlaid on that looks like a communications satellite, a communications tower, sorry, communicate, yeah. You know, over there. And... uh, there is hastily sketched notes about the apartment building is in the way it needs to be demolished to install this communications tower and near the bottom is tomorrow's date written on this easel sketch pad okay so how do i own something if a corporation thinks that they can just like demolish whatever building they want to then how do I actually inherit or own anything? Mm, it's yours, if anybody will listen to you. You do have a deed. Do I pay taxes on it to anything? I mean, 
No, nobody's come and claimed any property taxes because of where you happen to be. Near also the combat the, zone. Also, the corpse are very good at A, throwing money at a problem, and B, making people disappear. Yeah, but I mean, if they're going to throw money at a problem, wouldn't they throw it at me first? If I am on any kind of registered owner? They were like, make me an offer, right? But nobody's made me any kind of offer. Okay. Um, I go, go move around to the car and, and open up the door if it was closed by the guard. The passenger door is still open. The driver's side door is closed. So this is how you conduct business? You know, plan on tearing down my building and then shooting at me for no reason? I'm just here to survey, and they're here to make yeah, sure Yeah, and you gets shot away. at me, and you shot at me with no threatening weapon pointed at you. You open fire first. I have you on recording doing so. If it's the guy that's answering, I gesture toward the guard. Um, the guard doesn't seem concerned. The guy uh, shrugs. Uh, then why haven't you called the police? Uh, Racer, they called for extraction. Uh, how about you get in the driver's seat and wait, and we take these gentlemen for a drive? You got a destination in mind? The bay. Keys. I'll I'll toss him the keys. Her. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Is, I'll toss him. Like the keys. he occupying? Is he occupying the pass uh, the drivers? Yeah. Both front seats are occupied now. Get in his lap. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh, he does try. It's not a very likely fit. Okay. Okay. How about? We get these two chuckle fucks in the back. I'll take the passenger. No, you take the no, no, You got the gun. You got the gun. Stay behind him. Okay. Anyway, for, well, get them in there. And if they need some encouragement, I have some rather sharp fingernails. <laughs> that yeah, can well, encourage he them. Climbs over there. It's just not an easy fit. Then okay. they kind and, of spill over onto the driver's seat a little bit too because of this. Okay, start driving. Uh, Racer, can you make sure nothing major happens? I'm gonna do some work on the car, if you catch my meaning. Mm-hmm. Uh, gotcha. is there any way I can plug into the control node of the car? Sure. Okay, so I should make an interface roll, I'm assuming? Yes. Yeah, I'm kind of assuming you're eliminating any kind of location or tracking. So. That's the plan, and I'm gonna spend two points of luck. Let's see, so plus four, that is 17. Okay. You have access to the car's features. What does it look like we got on this bad boy? Anything tracking it? It has a very nice stereo system and GPS system, and it does have a transponder beacon that it is broadcasting on. I want to try and disable the GPS and the transponder beacon. Okay. Uh, should I make a roll for that? Yes. Give me another interface roll. This time I'll only spend one point of life. Because, like, I want to succeed, but... Eh, eh. Uh, that's an 11. Hmm. All right, so this is a control roll. You have to beat the DV by two. It's a one-shot, so if you accidentally call down a missile strike on our heads, it'll be fun. Uh, no oh, biggie. No. The example is they beat it by two. So, uh, okay. With an 11, yes, you can shut down the transponder. Wonderful. Uh, I will give you, as a net runner, however, yeah, both of you would be aware that people often have transponders as well. Um, there is a service called Trauma Team that if somebody dies, uh, they, upon the moment of death or when they activate a uh, card, they can break the card to call them earlier, but Trauma Team can home in on a person's personal signal as well. And corporate operatives likely have a very similar thing. So even though you've shut down the car, he may or may not have something personally that is leading to him as well. 
Now, would that be something they carry on them or something they carry in them? That depends on the corp that issued it. Uh, most corps will implant something. I'm going to look at uh, our surveyor friend and just simply ask him. So your transponder, do you carry it with you or is it implanted? It's implanted. And can you turn that off manually or does it have to be turned off forcibly? He um, actually tilts his head slightly. Uh, I don't no, I don't think it can be turned off. Well, shit. It's one of the downsides, some may think. Are there are there any um, uh, underground parking garages or places where maybe I could take the car where it will obscure the signal? There are some underground parking garages, yes. Whether or not it will obscure the signal, maybe. Okay, let's go for one. Uh, pick one that I think will be mostly empty and, and drive the car there and head down in. Okay. You have them at your leisure. Uh, search them for additional weaponry um, and then uh, disable the car, I guess. Um, I, I don't know if it has any spare tires or something, but uh, it might be as simple as just throwing away the key. Uh, it does have a spare tire in the back, um, and a you know a jack and a lug nut, a lug wrench. Um, the guy that w- that had the easel has a shoulder harness that has two cameras still mounted on it. He also has oh, an agent. Get that off of him. In his pocket. Okay. Uh, take those. Um, do, can we? Is the agent itself? Would it have a locator? Probably, but that would be something that would be activated, and it doesn't seem to be. So yeah, we're probably okay. going to strip him of his cameras and both of them of their agents if they have any. Um, and I feel like once we've stripped them and disabled the car, uh, Red Eye is going to turn to race sir and say, "Well, it's your shit they were messing with, so I think it's best that you do do the negotiate." I look at the the guy that was with the easel. Are you prepared to negotiate? I don't think so, right? You're just here to survey to see what's going to happen afterwards, right? Yeah, I was here to take measurements and report with them. Okay. Uh, walk them to the, the elevator and, and put them in the elevator and, you know, put, pull the emergency thing and break the, the panel so they can't get out of the elevator and let's leave. I don't, I don't think uh, up out of the the parking lot. Uh, uh, pick a, a side that we didn't go. Yeah. Oh no, we're not gonna take the car. I'm assuming we might go on foot and through back alleys. Okay. At least for a little while. I mean, I I have local experts, so I'm assuming I know local routes and stuff that I could safely yeah. get back to it. Yeah, you easily know back alleys and things like that. Um, as you're leaving, since you're on foot, you're not terribly fast. So about 10 minutes later, an aerial vehicle comes screaming into the area of uh, the building where you abandon the mat. It is heavily armed. It has a chain gun on the turret. And you guys are easily a quarter mile down the street at this point. So you can hear it. The engines, it's loud as hell. And it pulls to a hover and then comes down onto the ground at which point a squad of four heavily armed and armored people jump out and secure that building that you left the guys in the the parking garage yeah the parking garage well there's a building attached yeah, to the parking garage but yeah okay but you guys are, go you know casually yeah, going around. the other way and then when you do okay. eventually get back to your apartment the dead body is not there. Yeah, I see Royal is a efficient as always. Yeah, hopefully he, he hopefully he disposed. Okay, we got to call a, a building meeting. Let's get everybody up and together. Oh boy. All right. So, people, you going to meet back on the the roof again? If it's convenient. 
it's probably the best place to get more people. Now, uh, bad news, everybody. Uh, it looks like uh, a corp is going to try to demolish the building tomorrow. Dem- demolish the building? Mol- Molly's going yeah. to where the hell are we all going to go then? <sighs> That's the problem. Razor just looks at her like... <laughs> she just kind of shrugs. Oh, shit. Oh, well, we know the corp, right? It was on the... He he had, like, the... I'm assuming his agent somehow was registered to it, and is probably that's on the paper or something. I don't know. Did we know? Yeah, it was a world set. So we know world set is going to do it. Yep. From my Apparently talking to, to him, make... uh, world set <laughs> wants to tear this place down, put up a comm tower. Yeah. Um... I, I don't know. Do, would they like have set up like construction permits? Uh, would they would they need to like make arrangements? Would be a competitor? I don't know in this game what kind of leverage I could have to prevent something like that. Like, would I go on a run in WorldSat Corporation headquarters and try to do something about it, or is it like way behind it? I don't know what the world is like. Um, minor corps have the ability to. Um, do their paperwork retroactively so to speak so you can oh. um, if if you had access to you could break into one of their offices and hack into their system and kind of re-divert their plans perhaps um, also if it is a small corp they're only going to have limited resources to spend so if you make yourself enough of a nuisance and wipe out enough of their operatives they may realize that it's too much of a problem to worry about. Um, something like Militech, though, you know, with the private security, they were contracted out. So whatever happens to them happens to them. But if Militech itself was the corp going after the building, they probably wouldn't be stoppable by a small apartment full of people. However, you think uh, if, you know, WorldSat, you can look it up. It's not the biggest of corps. They probably have a limited personnel resource. So if they lose a few people, if they have to spend too much money to get this done, they're not likely to do it. As it is, you own the building. So, you know, it's going to take resources and stuff to retroactively negate that fact. I think... But a good plan is I can dig up whatever I can from our friend's agent, and then possibly we break into one of their offices, I see if I can get into their network, and maybe we can cause a little bit of property damage and mess with their plans. Maybe you get some data that we can use to blackmail them to stop? That, or just redirect their planning and zoning to a few blocks north. Okay, but we're gonna need more than just me and you. Yeah. I look at the other. I'm sorry, I missed that. What was the plan? Uh, he's going to check out the agent and the cameras and see if he can find out something that'll help us. And then uh, we could possibly arrange a very uh, impromptu run on one of their offices to see if we can get, like, either do some damage or cause get some data that we can use to blackmail. Um, Royal, who now up at the roof during this meeting has his assault rifle with him and he is wearing heavier armor. I'm willing to provide escort. Of course, it leaves the building a bit vulnerable if anybody shows up in the meantime. At which point, the Andersons, uh, Molly kind of cackles. Oh, if it's not too bad, we can be a little bit on the defensive. Right, boys? And the others kind of are having bats nearby and stuff. Nobody is unarmed now at this meeting since what happened earlier. That would certainly solve the problem with leaving the apartment unguarded. So we got the three of us. No, hopefully it's enough. Rico. Um, Royal? I could put on a concert and we can try to get a bunch of people here. Maybe uh, too many people to risk anything? I like how you think. A block party? Yeah. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. Um, do you think uh, Rex might have some some resources we can get, like another person, or uh, help you with the block? Uh, you two know Rex, and it's possible you could hire. He's a fixer, so he would be able to hire you assistance. 
Well, sounds like a plan. Let's start making some phone calls. All right. Um, who has the lowest luck? Not points available, but actual attribute. I have a luck of 10. <laughs> uh, so mine is an 8. So mine's the lowest. All right. So roll me a d10. Your goal here is to roll under your luck by three, so five or lower. All right. So right as you say, let's make some phone calls, power goes out. You're on the roof. You hear the, the, that sound, that ominous sound of the heavy thunk, and then everything starts to power down. It gets dark, and you watch, since you're on the roof, you can see a view around the city. The city starts to go dark in about a quarter mile in all directions. Shit. Uh, everybody should be grabbing their personal stuff in their rooms and vacating the building, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Royal gets his, his rifle out and he starts walking perimeter around the roof. Carefully. Uh, the Andersons. Uh, this isn't good. Yeah, get your stuff. Let's get out of here. I... I if they can block out this much of the area, we can't hold this place. Yeah, let's, um, yeah, it's a good idea. And they carefully start heading into the stairwell to go down. Um, Royal waits until everybody else is down before he does. It seems like he can see in the dark somewhat, so he is carefully scanning the area. I don't, I don't like this. Whatever... Whatever play we're going to make, we should probably make it quick. I don't even know where their offices are. I, if, if you can, like, set up some sort of defense that'll make them pay for it, I go for it. But I think our best bet is to get out of here right now. We can make them pay for it later. If we can get out of here and I can get to the right place, I can do some digging, see where their offices are. I can well, check our friend's what are you waiting? What are you talking to me for? Well, I don't know go if you've do noticed it. or not. But we've pissed off a corporation. I don't like walking the streets of Night City alone. You need you need a babysitter, is what you're saying. You can put it that way. Well, grab your stuff. I'm going to grab mine. I, I don't see any reason why the place we go to can't be a place that you can do whatever you get to do. Hmm. And yeah, I'm going to like grab my equipment and what? Uh, let me see here. Uh, since you guys are kind of moving down in a group... Royals agent rings. He's behind you and he kind of stops and looks at it. That's odd. Uh, who's calling? Uh, doesn't say. But I checked this a few minutes ago and there was no signal. Well, with how today's going, I doubt it's a telemarketer. He, um, pushes the, the end call, declined the call. I don't like that. And then Red Eye, your agent, starts to ring. I'm going to look at it. It's not announcing the caller. <sighs> About to make the biggest mistake of my life. I'll answer. Okay. There is a voice. I would like to speak to the owner of the building. <sighs> like, puts a hand over the receiver, then looks over the racer and just mouths, it's for you. I hold out my hand for the agent. I hand it over. Yo. Hello. This is... Yo. Uh, no, I don't want to go with Smith. Jacobs with WorldSat. We have a bit of a situation, and I would like to end it without violence. Why did you start with violence, then? We did not. I believe I've seen a transcript... Uh, people were warned to leave well enough alone and somebody then walked out with a camera and started recording the situation thus provoking a conflict you, fu you fired on someone with a camera uh, yes someone who wasn't threatening you that you started the violence know. stop bullshitting me stop bullshitting me you started the violence just fucking fess up and say you did and let's move on do you wish to deal or not? I'm willing to offer you 100,000 euro for the building. Why won't you admit that you started things? I'm kind of curious. I mean, I do have a recording of it. 
uh, because I was not there. You, your representative, your your employee, your client, whatever. You're the one that started shooting. Uh, if you say so. Uh, I just remember that okay. we did take the surveyor's cameras, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, Joe, uh, 100,000 euro? I mean, is that like a good deal? Or, I mean, what? I, I, I don't know what kind of offer that is or like it'd be worth Think of a euro worth about half of what a U.S. dollar is. So for a four-story apartment, he's offering you the equivalent of 200 grand. Yeah, but there's only like six people living in it. Oh, no, you've got more people living in it. Just not everybody was up at the meeting. You probably have a good 20 other people living in it. Okay. And, And the... I don't know if it's like a good value or not still. I mean, it, it, you said it's not a cash cow, sort of like it makes it money, makes almost but no not money. a lot. It makes almost no money for me. Yeah. What okay. you get in rent and, pretty uh, much has to go to pay for repairs and stuff like that. Yeah, let's see. Goals, friendship, but I don't got any friends here. Uh, I don't know. You have me. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're making us an offer, um, but I, I assume we're going to have to get out by tomorrow. We got other people here, um, and, and I'm sure some of them wouldn't want to go, even if with them, even if I did offer them a parting change. Probably not. Of course, it is a lot of money. So, Joe, how much does it cost to, like, uh, for example, for a an individual to get a, an apartment, even if it's a crappy one like mine? <laughs> Uh, to rent like if I, if I like if, like if I gave them all like uh, two thousand dollars equivalent, is that uh, uh, sufficient enough for them to help resettle, or is it is it just like chump change? Um, your apartment, let's see, would roughly go for. I have a pricing here somewhere that should work. And how much would they be willing to pay us again? They're offering a hundred grand. Uh, yeah. Hundred grand. And how many people do we have living here? Probably about thirty total. Okay. Alright, housing. Um an apartment. This is moderate, it's not quite the combat zone. So you're looking at maybe four hundred a room per month. Okay, so yeah, that would be substantial. If I gave them all like uh, two thousand, then uh, they could five months rent for somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, at least live for a few months. We, we could actually, with the money they're offering us, we could stand to give everyone closer to about two thousand five hundred, maybe even three thousand, if we're feeling generous. Well, if you are feeling generous, sorry. No, it, it's my apartment building. I <laughs> forgive me for for wanting to keep a little bit of it. Um. Uh. Okay. Uh. Um, I talk into the phone. I'm amenable, but call me back in half an hour. Sorry, you broke up. I said, I'm amenable, but call me back in half an hour. Very well. And let's go talk to the other residents. All right, so Royal is still with you. Uh, The Andersons are in their apartment nearby. A lot of the other tenants don't seem the ones that you know they were at the barbecue but they didn't get involved with anything they aren't answering their doors their doors are locked Uh, a few of them their doors are open and they aren't around uh do they know how to call me on my phone yeah most of them will call you if they have a problem okay and the the one doesn't work and stuff they call you yeah, so they know how to call me. So the ones that are open, I'm assuming it looks like they've cleared out some of their stuff. Yeah. Okay, kick down a couple of the doors for the ones that I think are vulnerable, like the elderly or the children, uh, people with children, things, that sort of thing. If they don't answer their doors, kick them in. Um, see, make sure that they're not here. Okay, yeah, uh, the ones that are and, closed and, so that, and nobody's answering, uh, a few of them are empty and just have been locked. But a few of them, somebody, you know, screams in fright as you kick open the door, and they seem to be huddled behind a table. Bad news. Corp wants to destroy the building tomorrow. Uh, they're offering us some money to get out. Uh, get your shit. What? What? 
We, we, we gotta leave? Yeah, now. Sorry about this. Not my plan. But, 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 but... A lot of people start making excuses, and, you know, you kind of have to... kind of give them a nudge. Um... But eventually they uh, will get in line. They just some of them don't start the process without a little encouragement. Uh, Red Eye is gonna try and like catch up to Racer, and and like hold out um one like hold out one of his hands, which obviously he's written like in ink on his hand, just a bunch of math equations, and he's just gonna say, "Listen, I was running the numbers." And you could stand to give everyone here about 2,000, and you'd still be walking out of this with 40,000 euro for yourself. That's about what I was planning. So, now, I don't know if you want to cut me into the deal in any way, but I'm just saying. You, you can really. Fair, or do you mean more than normal, the other lieutenants? I'm saying, if, if I get a little bit more than the other tenants, maybe. You know, we could both use that money to further some edge running work. It's an idea. Let's talk about it a little bit later. Uh, when they call back, tell them to bring uh, the cash to the front of the building, as well as uh, they're going to need a uh, out of character, like an indemnity or something, saying that they're taking responsibility for the the property and the taxes and all the debts and everything associated with. Cyberpunk Red and Cyberpunk 2020 are owned and published by Artalsorian Games. The intro music is Collapse off the album I Am Mortal But Was Fiend, which you can find on the freemusicarchive.org. Additional music provided by Sirenscape. Relative Dimension is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial 4.0 International License. You can share us, but please give us credit. If you would like to get in touch with the Relative Dimension, you can visit our website at relativedimension.com. You can contact us, email, at podcast at relativedimension.com. You can visit our Facebook at facebook.com slash relativedimensionpodcast. You can check us out on Twitter at relativedpod. You can check out our Patreon if you wish to support us at patreon.com slash relativedimension.com.